Hey, welcome everyone to the Archicad User Monthly Webinar for April 2023. My name is Eric Fabro, and my special guest today is Jason Josselson, architect. How are you doing, Jason? Not great, Eric. Always good to be with you on a live uh, Zoom or go to webinar. Fantastic to be here tonight. Yeah, glad to have you back. Um, so let us all know that you can hear us and see the screen. Use the go to webinar questions area and tell us uh, where you're calling in from as well. Um, so uh, say hello and say where you're located. So yeah, great. Right. E Eric, do you want do you want to uh, ask the audience maybe to tell us what type of designers they are as well? Okay, sure. So in addition to saying where you're from, say what type of design you do, is it residential, commercial, what type of thing, maybe modern or uh, other types of styles. And uh, I guess the other question I know you were asking is, um, we talked about before the presentation is, uh, feel free to say what you struggle with or your biggest challenge is with presenting your designs to clients, you know, in terms of rendering, showing them, concepts and things so share anything like that um so uh, but at least uh, say where you're from and uh we'll i can see a bunch of people responding uh peter rieger from maryland gary from uh well residential and education dogby from uh, ghana okay luther from dc all right and gary from northern ireland bob stewart hey long time haven't seen you for a while from Southern California. Okay, and Rick Skorik, hey, back from Tokyo. Must be very early there. All right, so uh, please keep putting the, that in. Uh, let me introduce uh, Jason and say that this is a very special presentation because it's co-sponsored um, and co-produced by the Architect Marketing Institute, of which I am a partner and co-founder of, um, concept design architect. Uh, which is Jason's company um, and his uh, venture in terms of training and helping architects uh, with design and rendering tools. Uh, so in today's session, uh, in addition to uh, applying and being relevant to Archicad users, as you know, I usually focus um, only on that, uh, this is very relevant for people regardless of what tool you use, whether you use Archicad or Revit, Vectorworks or other tools for designing, uh, one of the key challenges you always have is how much and when do you show the client you know, your design? Because there are some real challenges as you're working through a 3D modeling process for how much detail is there right at the beginning and as you go along, uh, does the image really communicate your idea? Does the client understand it when they're looking at it? Do they have an emotional, connection to it or does it seem like just computer stuff to them so um, you know many different ways to approach your whole design process Jason's really optimized uh, one particular area that is so critical to getting rapport and confidence and enthusiasm from your so I'm gonna uh, make you present or Jason you can uh, start showing your screen um, here Let me, uh, make you presenter and you can go ahead and we'll get going. So uh, Jason, I guess one of the things that we'll want to see uh, right away, or, or let's say, tell us a little bit about how you came to this and, and you know, you're, you have some things to share with us. They came out of a long experience uh, that you had, uh, that you have had as a, a project architect, that is a design architect. Um, so go ahead and uh, tell us about yeah. it. Well, it's fantastic. It's a long-winded question, so we possibly going to jump into a whole bunch of slides. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you my story and tell you exactly where I'm shooting from. And uh, really, it all starts in the commercial world of architecture. Um, this is me in South Africa on the left-hand side in a big commercial studio in Johannesburg and on the right hand side in a commercial studio in Jerusalem where I now live. I'll just tell you a little bit more about me. Um, basically live in Jerusalem which is an eclectic cacophony of old and new architecture 
as you can see here, Jerusalem at sunset, and a very vibrant city. That's where I live, full of cool things like markets and very beautiful flowers and poppies and also the ancient stuff, which you can also find everywhere. And my role has been a concept design architect where I've had to do planning, have to work on the design, the modeling and the presentation. So everything in one sort of stop. And really that's been my, my niche over the last 20 years and launching projects and getting clients excited about new projects, old projects and igniting the, the fees that so desperately need to fuel the process. So I'm going to tell you exactly how this process was born, just to show you a little bit of my work quickly. These are some of the projects, some high-rise towers in the Middle East, um, different projects. Uh, these are very quick presentations done using SketchUp and Photoshop, some using V-Ray, some using Lumion and SketchUp and Photoshop, and some using um, Revit, modeling in Revit, uh, rendering in Lumion, and obviously using SketchUp as an in-between tool. So d different um, tools, uh, very familiar with different high-end rendering tools. But the greatest thing is I've been privilege to teach hundreds of architects over the last two years and really that's been my biggest dream is to empower them with the streamlined workflows that I've developed for myself and we're going to speak about those workflows because they are applicable to to designers in the industry obviously if you're a CEO and you're not designing this may not be applicable to you but if you're someone who's designing and presenting work in a small office or a medium-sized office then obviously this will apply to you so this is kind of where it all started for me right um, in the old days before I was born this is how the design studio used to look for people everyone worked on design boards right and paper and they were pushing the drawings with rotting pens if the rotting pen hadn't developed i'm not sure what they used before then and obviously as time went by the the methodologies became more refined the boards became better and um, this is probably in the 90s this young lady is working on her board with a pencil and rotting pen and obviously the machinery got a lot better but then the office evolved and there was this huge shift in paradigm where the office started to look like this you know it became virtual everything became virtual the drawing board became virtual and then we were pounded with so many different softwares to use autocad archicad microstation vectorworks all plan revit sketchup you name it grasshopper lumion twin motion you can go crazy there's so many tools out there so it obviously causes an issue in the industry because now you need to choose a methodology and now you've got all these tools out there so that's really what's happened these days is is that there are a whole bunch of tools they very similar but very different and we're going to speak about that tonight as well so what's really important to know is that when you are a design architect, and this is what happened to me, um, I'm trying to explain my problem and what happened to me uh, early on in my process is that when I was preparing for a meeting with the client, maybe I wouldn't go to that meeting sometimes, maybe I would, it depends on whose project it belonged to, and if you're in a commercial firm, you collaborate with a lot of people. So, you obviously you're taking your plans your elevations your sections into the meeting um, your conceptual work and every single time that you meet with the client you are going to support it with 3d imagery maybe it's a hand sketch maybe it's a CAD drawing whatever it might be and what started happening early in my career is there would be so many iterations of the design maybe nine iterations 10 iterations these represent the iterations by the way and every single time that you would meet with the client you would have to present besides your design and the way you would normally present the design which architects in general are good at you would have to support it with 3d imagery 
And that became an extremely difficult task because what happened is most people are using photorealistic renders to communicate their design. And the truth be told is what we're going to take a look at now that it creates a lot of complexity with, uh, with stress. Um, and we are going to take a look at that now. So why is it so important to have 3D imagery? And that's also what I want to talk about. So you'd have all these iterations that you'd have to prepare for, and it would become back-breaking labor. But the reason why the 3D image is so important is because in the beginning of the project, you may have an initial idea or you're developing a design here on the left-hand side. If you can see my mouse going around in circles. And the whole idea is to bridge the gap, which allows the fee schedule to be stimulated. You want the client to get excited so that he can start to pay fees. And you need to put the cherry on top of your project, which means that the way that it works the best is that you compile 3D imagery perspectives of your design because that's the way the client interfaces with the project. Clients aren't normally great at reading plans and elevations and they understand them and some do better than, the, than others, but when it comes to the 3D envelope, they become um, enticed into the project through imagery. And that imagery can be photorealistic, but the problem is, is if you pursue the photorealistic pathways, you know, to entice your client into uh, the, the product that you're developing to stimulate fees, it is backbreaking labor every single time to use twin motion or Lumion, although the softwares are easier, to get a compelling image out there is it 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 it's it's riveting when it, it it's backbreaking it it really can take a lot of energy out of you especially if you've been designing for a few days or a week before and you exhausted already now you've got to prepare 3d imagery you've got to deal with so many issues you've got to deal with um texture mapping uv mapping lighting and all that type of stuff and that's what we're going to talk about right now so here we go the top heavy methods of 3D communication that many, many, I would say more than 90% of design architects, building designers get involved with, is the, they dealing with top heavy methods. Unless you're using a visualization artist, that's a different story. But a lot of companies don't always subcontract out. And um, if you're using a visualization artist, that's a different story. And someone who's really good, but most of the time, um, you have to hunt those type of people down and they cost a lot of money. So the top heavy methods, the need for faster preparation, I found that I needed to prepare my work really quickly. So point one is really about finding an ease of use. And for me, that was critical. You know, I wanted to find easier ways of getting to that final result. Instead of spending 10 hours on a render, I wanted to spend 45 minutes on a render. So I realized that avoiding intense 3D visualization techniques was critical. And I was using 3D Studio, I was using V-Ray, I was using early days that, and later on Lumion Twin Motion, but it still bogged me down. For instance, um, one project took me two weeks to do, you know, just render-wise after designing it. So moving away from photorealism, really became my, my objectivity, you know, so that I could get stuff done. I wanted to go home. I wanted to be with my family. I wanted to be with my friends. I also wanted to have a life. You know, the life of an architect can't just be overwhelmed all the time. And that's what you learn when you're a design architect, that there's this, this absolute stress that's going to get you just before a deadline. And especially if you're working in a commercial firm, that really is a big problem because you get hit with deadlines twice a week. So you can only imagine sometimes only getting home for breakfast in the morning. So also you want to maintain focus on the design and not on visualization. So what would be happening to me in point five is that I would be 
designing, but then rushing my design. So I'd leave some time to do my renders and basically rendering under pressure. It's, it's just really not the way to go. So you want to maintain focus on your design process without losing track of that. And so what I also found, which is quite surprising, is that over complex imagery can overwhelm your client. And I see a lot of big companies doing it. You know, they are going for the, the latest VR and they're going for the latest animation and Unreal Editor and this and that. And sometimes a client just can't absorb so much. So what I find is that a lot of architects are worrying about the technology and not thinking about the client and the way that the client can absorb the design or take it in and relate to the project so that he can be on the same page with you in the design conversation. That is critical. So you want your clients to be on board with your process, but you also need a process that's light on resources and also light on you. You don't want to be doing stuff like this. So obviously we want to make life simpler. And the best analogy that I could possibly find really was that, you know, it's sort of like this. When you're using the complex softwares out there, you are getting involved with a lot of sliders and buttons and tools to balance your image. Even if you're using the easier 3D render softwares, you know, it's like sitting in the cockpit of a 747 and not knowing which buttons do what. And obviously after a while through trial and error, getting to know these buttons and there are just so many sliders and there's so many iterations that can happen on one image that it becomes uh, absolute uh, nightmare sometimes when you're under pressure. So this is typical of an architect, you know, falling asleep on the job and, and you, you want to stay away from this type of lifestyle. You want to, you want to lead a healthy lifestyle and too many late nights can really take a toll on your health. Here is typically what we taught at university. We taught that, you know, you're going to work through the night and there are much easier workflows that can stop this from happening. And it's not true. You don't have to work through the night. You do not have to fall asleep or drink coffee or smoke cigarettes or drink Red Bulls, or whatever keeps you up, caffeine drinks. You know, you don't have to do that. It's very unhealthy. And you can also have a life as a design architect. You don't have to be a, a, um, a victim of stress. So let's take a look now. We're gonna take a look at some high-end renders. And with these renders come from the chaos group. And we're going to take a look at what architects are doing in the industry. It's really important to see this because we're going to take a look how difficult it is. So this is the chaos group. Obviously, some of the best render engines in the world come from chaos group or have in the past. This is V-Ray. This is an image. It's not my image. This is an image of their website. And you can see the complexity to get an image to balance like this it's extremely difficult. You have to be super talented. You have to almost be doing this full time to get it to look like this. And if you don't get it to look like this, any errors that you make, you'll be able to pick up. And not only that, during the design conversation, you don't really want something that's so refined. You want your client, clients excuse me, to have some dream space. It's super important to have that dream space. And when you offer clients photorealistic images in the beginning, there is no space for them to envisage their project to be included in the project. So it becomes dictatorial. you dictating materials too early on. So how do you go about it? Let's take a look at some more images. Obviously, these images are final uh, designs. And to get a photorealistic out like this, you have to be the best of the best. You know, this isn't something that the software just does for you. Softwares don't automatically cough out an image for you like this. You need to be super, super skilled. This is Lumion. Now, Lumion is an amazing, amazing software. The foliage in Lumion is mind blowing. And I'm not putting Lumion or V Ray down. I'm just saying there's a place for it in the industry, but not in the design conversation. Lumion is absolutely based on gaming technology, just like Twinmotion. 
but Lumion's foliage is just mind blowing. And but to get an image to be as compelling and realistic as this is days of work. Days. You can't just hook this up in 10 minutes. And the whole industry is pushing the ideas that it's easy to to get photorealistic image out there quickly and it's impeding your design process and it's stopping you from communicating with your client in easier ways. So let's move forward, right? This is basically another chaos group image, mind blowing image. And the truth be told is that you have to be a genius. This is Albert Einstein. He said intellectuals solve problems and geniuses prevent them. So um, I'm not saying that by any means that I'm a genius. I'm just saying that you can avoid a problem by just thinking about it rationally, you know, and that's what design architects need to start doing before they get sold on high-end photorealism for everything. You can't use high-end photorealism for the design conversation. It's going to break your back unless you're in a big company and you've got a design visualization team next to you. You've got to be super careful on how you approach your design conversation. So we learn from masters, you know, so it's very important to go back in history to take a look at the masters of perspective to understand where we need to head. And although we're going backwards, we're also going forward. So we're going to take a look at quickly a few, few of Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, drawings over 120 years ago. Frank was very stylish, here he is on the left-hand side, and there on the right-hand side is Marion Griffin Mahoney, who was one of his perspective artists. He had a few different perspective artists, but she was the most prolific and the most famous out of all of them. I would suggest that she produced some really amazing drawings. And here are some of the drawings, and they look very much like SketchUp, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And when you take a look at it, okay, they're more stylish, they're more humane, and they're more soft than SketchUp, but they've got the line work, and they look handcrafted, they've got foliage, they've got richness to them, and they speak about a beautiful place. And the amazing thing is Frank was a master at packaging his work, and he knew that clients needed perspective. Now, you know, the way they drew these perspectives up to scale was through hand on a board using analytical geometry, rulers, pens, to project up from the plans. And now these days we just have SketchUp, which just hooks it up for us. All you need to do is model it in any software and you can bring it into SketchUp and you can get the, the perspective. And in those days they had to manually project these images up, but absolutely magnificent drawing. I'm gonna show you a couple more. He has another perspective of his, and we included foliage. And the different perspectives that came out of his office were just really his success, you know, because now the clients could see what was actually happening in the planning, you know. And I think he was really a forerunner of doing these type of amazing mind-blowing perspectives. The most amazing perspective that I've learned from Frank Lloyd Wright is the Guggenheim, and the reason why is if you take a look at the Guggenheim Museum, as amazing as it is as a as a design, the way they've represented it in this particular perspective is through scale. You can see, if you can see it, I'm not sure if you can, but there are people, silhouettes of people, there are cars, and there are trees and foliage, and immediately, these psychological triggers bring the viewer into the project and allow the viewer to relate to the scale and size. And that's super important when you're doing perspectives. You need those tools. And not only that, the line work allows this to look handcrafted, which means that there was some human being crafting the image. It's not a photorealistic render that says, wow, I'm trying to mimic reality. It's a representation of your design now, and it's crafted by a human being. So we've lost that human touch. We've lost that energy of the human touch when it comes to representing our designs. And representing design is the key to selling projects. Even if you've got a client, it can accelerate the project. And it's an extremely powerful business tool and marketing tool at the same time. So we're gonna move forward a little bit. So you learn a hell of a lot from Frank Lloyd Wright. Another important person 
who says stuff about the pencil and the computer. He says that the pencil and the computer, Sir Norman Foster, if left to their own devices, are equally dumb and only as good as the person driving them. What does that mean? Basically, it means that architects and designers these days are relying on the computer to cough out the image for them as well. They're not relying on the human touch anymore. They believe that the mechanism of the computer is going to create for them the, the mastery that they need. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. We also now have artificial intelligence, which is also claiming to be the master of perspective and design, but there is absolutely no control over it, a minimal amount of control. And maybe one day there will be a lot more control, but right now it's still not there. And maybe we will see soon if um, uh, artificial intelligence takes on the ability to create uh, perspectives that represent our drawings. Um, the 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 main software at the moment on Discord is called Midjourney. You can go take a look at it now. You can play around with it. But you've got to type stuff into Discord, and it's obviously not going to cough out an image that represents your planning and your design. It's just going to cough out an image based on a notion. So there's no sense of scale or there's no sense of planning and organization, but the images are very compelling, very organic in nature and completely computer generated. But then you've obviously got to rationalize it still and that you have to use the, the human touch and you have to go back and try and work out how big this thing is because who knows how big it is and um, the scale of it and just different mid-journey projects, very organic in nature. This is uh, extremely beautiful. You know, when you take a look at it, it's got something interesting about it. And another mid-journey image of an urban landscape and a, a closer image of some sort of cone-shaped building, very futuristic in nature, but stuff that's really good good and for for the the, the visionary you know, but I don't think very practical yet, but maybe we'll get there in the next couple of years, who knows? And um, some more imagery from Midjourney. So that's really what's happening with Midjourney right now. And I don't believe artificial intelligence at the moment will be able to conjure plans, sections and elevations uh, as refined as we would like, you know, yet. And um, that that's possibly going to happen. I mean, you can comment about it in the chat right now if you you want to say some stuff about it. But let's move on. Okay. There are other ways that uh, architects are representing buildings, like Richard Mayer. He represents his buildings 3D. This is obviously a final product. This is right at the end of the process, and he represents it through models. And the beauty about his models are they always white, and you can always see the shading and the shadow work. So mind blowing. But to create a model like this costs hundreds and thousands of dollars, possibly to to get it to this level. I'll just show you some more images of his work, and uh, just beautiful stuff but this is not conceptual this has got nothing to do with the design conversation obviously they have other methods to to create the design conversation 3d envelope but this is really beautiful beautiful stuff monochromatic timber you know models and you can see the shadow work which is absolutely phenomenal and a huge inspiration for me so what we're going to take a look at now is so those are a couple of new things that are happening and obviously the model's not a new thing um, but we're going to take a look at why the handcrafted image is so important you know we're going to take a look at some images that are have taken off the web and we're going to take a look at what people have done now immediately when you look at a handcrafted image this is not my work by the way this is from other designers and architects we're just showing what's happening in the industry and what is um what tools are being used in an industry. For me, these are the best tools. If you are using a computer, if you aren't using a computer, if you want to do hand sketches, this is, um, you have to be super talented to be able to do a hand sketch like this. It takes years and years of practice, and but extremely beautiful and you're using an oil-based Copic marker, you can get the most phenomenal uh, image out. And the reason why these hand rendered images are so beautiful is because they simplify the concept they simplify the design 
and they distill it so the client can relate back to them in a much easier way. And so I picked a whole lot that I felt were suitable for this presentation. Like for instance, this building's magnificent, um, just simplified, you know, the lines create this, the line work creates this cohesive, cohes sorry, this cohesiveness between the buildings and everything gets pulled together and just really amazing as a tool to communicate, but you really need to know what you're doing to get it to look like this. Here's another image, really beautiful. Someone's obviously traced over a CAD image, but absolutely beautiful with the foliage, with the line work, the shadows, just absolutely gorgeous. And if I was a client, I would say, yes, this is a great start, let's move forward. And you could really get this stuff going if you really know how to do it if by hand. And that's also the issue. This, this is this is definitely an iPad. Um, you can do sketches on an iPad, you know, using Procreate. Um, you can trace over images, you can color them in. But once again, takes a long time to get right. Really um, a process that you can really employ in, in your methods and just really powerful tools out there. Let's take a look at some more of these images. Really beautiful pencil sketch here. And you can see immediately, you can just compare to the photorealistic, and, and I'm, I'm not putting photorealism down, I'm just saying compared to photorealism, I am personally mentally more engaged in this image uh, more than a photorealistic image as a design architect. It, it really excites me a lot more. I'm sure you may agree with me. And um, if you don't, you can also put your your comments in the chat and we'll speak about it just now. And just one more image. This is a real amazing image of Pinterest. Just take a look at this image. Also, I would say created in SketchUp and hand rendered, really beautiful, exquisite stuff. And then obviously if you're doing small concept designs, you could also be doing stuff like this, just really powerful in its essence. And we're gonna move on really. And why I showed you these images, the reason why is because most architects don't have the time to attain this level of visualization even through natural hand sketching because they are super intimidated about setting up perspective and their methods haven't been refined. Maybe their planning and their, their detailing and their sections are all up to scale, up to scratch. But when it comes to perspectives, a lot of architects are intimidated by setting them up and, and, and doing this. So I came up with a method that really allows you to liberate the tools of the computer to explore perspective and to work with perspective, even if you have zero talent. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that. Well, so, uh, not exactly, yes. Jason? Great yes, Eric. so far. I just want to invite people to share feedback in the chat. You know, I'm seeing a few people like Jeffrey Tandel says, uh, you know, um, loving your session so far, hit a lot of notes for me. Um, you know, definitely uh, uh, some good feedback there. So please feel free to type in, what do you think of just this little review, this first section of the presentation review of what's currently out there and now, in a minute, we're going to be seeing Jason's, um, you know, innovations and uh, the genius, uh, you know, like that slide of uh, um, Albert Einstein saying, geniuses prevent problems. So, you know, um, and create opportunities. I would say that's probably equally valid is when you can prevent issues and you can also create new opportunities. So please share in the um, uh, here. And if you have any questions, please put them down, um, you know, put them in here and I'll save them and feed them to Jason as we go along. But uh, so far, I love the iterations you've done because uh, we've done presentations together a few times in the past and each time it gets richer. So thank you for, for doing that. No, All right. Thanks, Eric. By the way, Eric, I can't see the, the questions on my side in the chat, but anyway, you can mention them to me. It might be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll get into questions just now. I'm just gonna show you a, a few more slides. We're gonna be going for another 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, so I think this is the, the way I resolved 
the issue, the stress, the late nights, and the ability to make my life easier when preparing 3Ds for client meetings. And this is what I came up with. This is the most streamlined workflow, I think, known to mankind. I haven't seen something that works this quick, but also produces imagery that is amazing. And, and the software is that basically you need to know to get this process to work is obviously the software is that you're modeling already. Most architects these days know how to model. It's easy to create a model. You could create a model in Revit, you could create it in Archicad, and whatever other softwares you're using. I mean, there's AllPlan, there's Vectorworks, there's some amazing modeling softwares out there, but their internal render capability is really good, but very cumbersome. Most of these softwares are really uh, made to create technical drawings, but they do have great stuff. You know, you can put in scapes as a plugin onto Revit, but then once again, you're involved with photorealism. So you can use the softwares to model and create a 3D WG and import it into SketchUp. And SketchUp is the most dynamic program. It is just really robust. It doesn't have issues. You know, you don't have to know too much to use SketchUp. And then what we do is we prepare our imagery in SketchUp and we take layers of information using something called the stacking effect into Photoshop where we prepare our imagery and we airbrush our imagery in Photoshop and we prepare it so it's very much humane and has that human touch. We take the, the rigidness of SketchUp's imagery away and we replace it with a softness. And then also what we're going to be taking a look at is layouts. And I'm going to show you some of my students' work. Um, we've had over 300 students, sorry, somewhere in the region of 300 students through this program. And I'm going to show you a few of my top students' work from, from this year. And we're going to just take a look. Firstly, um, this is the type of image that you can prepare in about 20 minutes, you know. And what you'll notice here is that the white of the page is coming through. And what I suggest to my, my students is that you need to print your images out on a nice thick card on a laser printer at tabloid A3 size in the 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 Western Hemisphere, they call it tabloid size, really bigger than two letter size pages. Um, and the white of the page fuses with the drawing. So you get this very amazing watercolor effect or this transparency. And I'm going to show you what can be done. So this is uh, from Frank Venning, one of his first attempts. And um, really, he's become an absolute master. If you're online tonight, well done to you. Um, this is a Revit model. And in about 20 to 30 minutes, um, this was done probably in, in one of my training sessions. I showed my, my, my concept design launch formula students how to create a model and then obviously rendered it. And a rendering like this can take you between 30 and 40 minutes. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to jump into actual JPEGs because I want to be able to zoom into these images to show you the quality that you can get out on paper. And the reason why we're speaking about paper is because paper, when you print out on paper, something absolutely magic happens. So let me just jump into my, my student work here. Let's just jump into one of these images. Can, can you see this image, uh, Eric? Eric? Yes, it is on screen. Yeah, I was muted. Sorry. It's beautiful. Okay. Okay, great. So this is, I just wanted to check. Um, this is some of Frank's work. I'm going to zoom into this just to show you the level of quality that you can get out of a sketch like render. And you must know that you're leveraging the power of SketchUp combined with Photoshop to produce images that have this absolutely amazing handcrafted energy. It's just incredible what you can achieve if you really understand a paint by numbers approach. And um, 
and you can just take a look at this foliage it's just exquisite we're going to jump onto the next image um not that i know how to jump onto the next image from here um i was hoping that i could uh, oh there you go we'll go back to my revit drawing now because i seem to have skipped it but um yeah that was quite an important drawing i don't know if i have it let me just see if i can find it in my my fold here. We'll go back to my Revit drawing just now, but it doesn't matter. All these images are great. This is by Wayne. He's from the United Kingdom. This is an image that he just produced, and he's an absolute master as well. Well done to you, Wayne. If you're online tonight, uh, you must just know that Wayne is really amazing at doing visualization, and he's just become just really an expert. Take a look at the colors, the line work. And the quality that you can get out of this, you know, it's almost like you, you don't stop zooming in. And um, this is a low resolution version of his one image. But just if I was a client and I was looking at this image, I would be absolutely blown away. And uh, we're going to take a look. This is one of his elevations where he combined it with some technical work. And you can also do your elevations and your sections with this process. Take a look at how this line work dovetails and overextends, just like a rotring pen. So we can leverage the tools of the computer to achieve um, amazing stuff um, that almost looks hand rendered. This is more of a conservative image, you know, it's not as wild line work wise, but this is from Mohammed Abdullah in the UK. He's just done some incredible work as well. It's more of a, a tighter style. You know, you can invent your own style. And that's the beauty about it. You have autonomy over the style. But just, you know, a compelling image is all you need. You know, line work, shadow work, color, and combined in Photoshop, just really amazing. Let's just go through a few more images. This is a sheet of um, paper with elevation, perspective, um, axonometric. Um, this is a boutique hotel. And you could get this like sort of old sepia type of energy out of your drawings as well. This is Wayne once again. He's doing some great, great imagery, just phenomenal line work. Take a look how dynamic the line work is. And that's the beauty about SketchUp. To get line work out of uh, other programs is not is not easy. And when you have line work, it's extremely um handcrafted if you want to call it that and your client will say my god how did you produce this line work how did you do it you know it's something that is not really seen um in the industry you know except if you're doing it by hand so some more work by wayne just one of his first projects just really beautiful stuff this is mohammed doing some great work here take a look you know, combining all the entourage uh, that we have in our SketchUp library and just putting an image together of this commercial scheme, you know, just really amazing. Take a look at the context, just so easy to work with context in SketchUp. You know, it's like playing with Lego. It's like a child playing with Lego. Take a look how he's placed these these windmills, you know, electrical windmills and the cars and people walking around here. So he's managed to activate the space around this building as if it was a little busy uh, district and just really done it with these simple tools. Obviously, you know, you need to practice this process. It's not something that comes like instantly, but you, you need to be able to to practice it just like any sport to to make it work for yourself and and once you get it you've got it for the rest of your life you know and but the learning curve isn't as great as uh using twin motion or lumion or any of those um proces here you go beautiful image take a look at this uh, it's a it's a concept design of a building and he's really mastered that let's just quickly go through a few more images I'm just going to go through some images. You can also get some interiors done, quick interiors, you know, combine it with layout, text, logos, and just throw this whole thing together, you know, really quickly without breaking your back and stressing before a meeting. Obviously, um, you know, I would say that it reduces the amount of time exceptionally, I would say by 80% to prepare for a meeting. Here's an, a, a perspective of a plan. Here is a 
urban proposal that he just did this week. Really cool stuff. And um, obviously different images from different students, color images. You know, this is one of our students' office. Uh, he had these images on his wall for his client and um, another client came in and uh, he managed to uh, get a new project out of these images simply by putting them on the wall. Um, let's just go and take a look at some more images. This is Stafford Bell from the United Kingdom. He's got a really retro style. He managed to put these amazing images together of the coffee shop. And um, this is one of the projects and just really amazing textures and color, just superior, you know, and take a look at this layout. It's super compelling. And a different horizontal layout of the same thing vertical layouts and so on and so forth so just really a really powerful way of presenting just give me a second here to reopen my file and so going back to this project which is a project that's a revit model and when you take a look at the detail here the foliage the people it just you can do a lot in sketchup by using its tools and what we're going to take a look at now. So that so that's 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 the render process. Um, and obviously the images I can show you for another 20 minutes, the student work, this is an amazing image. And let's just move forward right now. Um, one of my images for the training, and so on and so forth. This is a last image I'm going to show you. This is from a young design architect in Canada. Um, just extremely powerful layout and perspective. And um, okay, so I think now, what, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, some great <clears throat> feedback again, um, you know, fantastic renderings by Wayne, particularly gotten some feedback uh, there. Uh, so are you going to be showing how you do it? You know, is that, uh, you're going to be showing us a little bit how you work in SketchUp with it? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to jump into SketchUp and so, we're going to jump into SketchUp and I'm going to show you a file that I created for the session. Um, Before you go on, I'm just going to, I'm yes. just going to set the context here. So here we are. This is um, our monthly ARCHICAD user webinar. Many of you on the call are, are using ARCHICAD. Others use different tools, Revit, etc. cetera. Um, you basically take your 3D model that you're, you know, that you're used to working with and you export it and there's different you know, save as DWG or save as directly as a SketchUp file, but you take it into SketchUp. And at this point, some of the magic starts to happen where you manipulate the colors and line work, et cetera, and you put in the entourage, the, uh, you know, landscaping. Now you can put in landscaping, you can put in cars, you can put in furniture, et cetera, in ARCHICAD or Revit. And to some extent, it's roughly the same process. You go where you want to put it, you select from a library, and you place things. SketchUp does have a, a, a lot of uh, sort of a huge interface to, to get through the 3D warehouse um, uh, elements that may not be in the native ARCHICAD or Revit um, uh, toolkits, as well as a lot of landscape things that are conceptual um, there. Now, ultimately, when you assemble it here, though, you're um, you're building something that's going to be presented. Obviously, the whole idea here is we're taking something from a hard design model into a handcrafted image. Now, as you develop the image or you develop your model further in ARCHICAD or Revit, um, you can just re-export the, the building design and keep all the entourage, keep all of the, you know, the things that surround it, as well as the settings that you've worked out for which, where you're looking from, what, you know, color palette you're using, etc. So, as you develop it further and you come up with different design iterations, it isn't a problem because you can simply just drop the new version in to a copy of the file. So, having said that as a preamble, SketchUp, I've played around with it and I know Jason is going to show you it's so quick to do things that, yeah, you can change your perspective in ARCHICAD or Revit. Yeah, you can, you know, move around to different angles. You can change lighting, but take a look at how quick and easy it is to do things and things that you can't do, like the overshooting of the lines and the visual effects. Um, so I just wanted to set the context here. 
uh, particularly for all of you who know me well as the you know ArchiCAD teacher. Um, why do we go out of ArchiCAD to something like SketchUp and you know this artful render process? Because there are things that it's the right tool for the job. Take it away. Yes. Yes, no, exactly, exactly what you said, Eric. That it's the right tool for the job. You know, if you've modeled your building in Revit or in ArchiCAD, then you can just bring that, I call it the jewel, into SketchUp and you can embellish it with context and trees and everything in SketchUp. So SketchUp becomes your makeup artist. You become a makeup artist where you start to add your trees, your people, your surfboards, your Harley Davidsons, your your backdrop, your trees, your cars, your vehicles. And so SketchUp becomes the in-between tool. Now, what a lot of architects don't realize is they export from Revit to Lumion and Revit to Enscapes. But what you should ultimately be doing is export to SketchUp and then use SketchUp as your, your middle tool because it's just such a powerful program. And besides being a powerful program and dynamic, the reason why it is so dynamic is you can fly around and hunt for views really easily. You know, if you're using a more rigid technical software, your view finding capabilities is limited to the controls in your computer. But with SketchUp, you can just pu push the middle of your mouse down and hover around your building and you can just zoom in by rolling the mouse forward, rolling the mouse backwards, and that's if you uh, have one that of these. very models. similarly in ArchiCAD, so that, <clears throat> that in itself isn't a differentiating factor, but I know you have some controls over perspective uh, in terms of cone of vision and other things that, that uh, are actually distinct and you can't do. So uh, show us yes. how the line work changes and the lighting and, and things. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do that all. So basically in SketchUp you can also distort the view. So you can find different distortions of view. And the ease of use is what we're talking about here. I'm not saying that you can't do this in other softwares. I'm just saying that, you know, maybe uh, uh, you can, but I, I haven't seen it before. So like, let's say you, you, you want to create your view, but you, you want to include the Harley Davidson on the left here. And so you, you want to basically be able to have control over your camera and of your, your 360 rotate ability, you know, and, and that's really how it works. So you can, you can also like go hunting for views in seconds. And then once you found your views, obviously, um, it's it's an amazing perspective right now. You can go and you can export it in seconds as a JPEG. So you can just go to 2D graphic here in the export function, click options, you can select how many pixels and width 4,500, hit OK and hit export. And within five seconds, it's on your desktop and you've got a beautiful image for your meeting. Another thing that you can do in SketchUp, let's see if I can find it for you. I've saved some views here is that you can do line work. You can change the color of your line work. And this this aids to the handcrafted human touch. So let's go and take a look. If I wanted a green line, I can just go and find my, gosh, my color wheel, which is on my right hand screen at the moment. And you can go and select a green line and you've got a green line that quick, you know, and you can absolutely get the most amazing shots if you adjust your shadows quickly. You know, um, I know it's not Lumion, it's not Twin Motion, but an image like this can sell a scheme just as well as those products can sell because it looks handcrafted, you know. And once again, you can just go hunting for your views and you can, at the top of your page, you can add a, a scene quickly and you can save that view. So you can come back to that view later and then you can save that view and you can go back to your last view if you want to show your client that view live and you can bounce around the views that you've saved simply because there's one viewport. You can save different color line works. You can save different shadow settings. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just have a drink of my tea here. 
and you could also switch uh, the line work off and create shadows. Now I'm just going to show you how the shadow function works in SketchUp. You can absolutely position your shadows at any time of day, at any time of month, and you can just do that by using the slider. You can make your shadows less intense. They crude shadows, and that's why we use Photoshop because in Photoshop we do a whole lot of post-production and we also do our layout in Photoshop to, to bring all this information into Photoshop, you know, and we split our information up and we bring it into Photoshop and we soften it and we create a, a handcrafted image that we've got autonomy over where we can change the colors, we can change the line work, we can change the shadow work and we can create an image in 20, 30 minutes that um, doesn't use texture mapping and we can offer that image to our client really quick and that's what happened to me in the industry i came up with using revit using sketchup using photoshop to put these presentations together extremely quickly and what i found surprisingly is that um, i'm a commercial architect so i've been doing shopping centers and hotels and hospitals and that the clients were responding unbelievably well and it generated millions of dollars of fees over the 20 years for the companies that i worked for and i was pleasantly surprised because i never knew that that would happen you know i thought i, I would have to be using v-ray and lumion and twin motion but it's not true it's further from the truth than you can imagine so so SketchUp is just an extremely powerful tool. You can also take perspective off and you can get flat on views really quickly. Um, like if you've got a, a top view here, you can switch your line work on and you can absolutely, um, you know, get a shot out of that, export it quickly, boom, to your desktop, get an elevation out quickly, boom, to your desktop. And within five minutes, you could put a presentation together, your client um, will be impressed by it. And if you're really stressed at work and you want to do stuff quick, this is the way to go about it. You can see how compelling this image is. When you take a look at this image, this is a stunning image. And this is not even um, half of what you can do. It's like a tenth of what you can do with Photoshop. So so the photoshop experience is really intense and it, it takes some time to explain um, obviously i'm going to tell you conceptually is that you'll take different layers of information into photoshop and you will soften that information and make it less rigid and eventually it will come out like the work that you saw my students doing and obviously it takes a bit of practice so, um, so uh, yes yeah jason sorry to interrupt but um there are a couple of questions here. Um, yes. One is uh, the an entourage library would be important to have. Do you develop your own? So where do you have all of these, uh, uh, you know, the people, trees, cars, you know, etc. Uh, have you collected them? Do you have your favorites, you know, your favorite hundred or thousand elements that you pick from? Absolutely. I have my own entourage library where my students get that. Um, it's very low polygon, so the file size is so small. I'm not running a fancy computer here. My computer is four years old, and you can see how quickly it's functioning. But with the new cards, I can imagine that you don't need to worry about file size. And so, yes, I have my own entourage file. It's just one file where I cut and paste. You can just simply cut and paste stuff. I'm not going to open it now, but you could just paste stuff really quickly. So I hit copy on there, and you can open two instances of SketchUp and you can just paste like I just did right now um, a new bus here parked on the side you know and it's that simple so you'd open two instances of SketchUp and paste from one file to the next but besides that if you go to the top here you can go to 3D Warehouse if you have a trial version of SketchUp for 31 days. You can also get access to this. And then obviously, if you love SketchUp, then you can absolutely go and uh, purchase it. I think it's something like about three, three, four hundred dollars somewhere in that range. I'm not sure exactly. But if you go to all categories here, you can go and find whatever you're looking for. You can type cars. This is live online. And they're libraries of cars and um, anything that you can possibly think of 
online and then basically all you do is you just click download and load it directly into your, your file. There you go. It's already in from the web, but it's a very small car. I think it's a miniature car, so maybe someone uh, didn't create a car with a huge scale here. Let's see, maybe it's on underneath. It's a little mini car. I'm not sure where it went. It's probably the size of a few millimeters. But anyway, same thing as this Holly Davidson. I just downloaded it uh, in, in, in seconds and so, you can do so that. So you've curated, <clears throat> you've curated a whole library of your favorites, yes. of course. And when you work yes. with people, then you provide that. So that's a, a great, you know, sort of kickstart in terms of not having to go find it. You've got all those human figures and obviously um, different variety. Uh, I love yes. uh, that uh, some of you who are from Architect Marketing Institute from uh, our uh, group there um, may recognize AMI as our uh, company initials and the Sunshine Island bar. So if you want to get to Sunshine Island by um, you know using better marketing and better tools to communicating design, um, you can end up where you on Sunshine Island you have great clients, great projects, and are paid well, and maybe don't have to work quite as hard because you've got you know a better system. Um, yeah, and by the way, Eric, you missed out. Here's your office at the top. Ah, okay. So that's where that's, I'm. This is this is your weekend office. Okay. All right. I'll I'll look forward to to uh, occupying it shortly. All right. Um, another question, Ryan yes. here. Hey, Ryan. Um, do you make your own sketch lines for SketchUp? So uh, you, I don't know how the sketch lines are. I know you can. Uh, oh, so here we, you have something to share there but um, yes. let, let, let me just open up that file and um, yeah we can talk about it so sh should we speak a, should we get in, involved with questions now Eric how do you feel about oh, that actually, all right let, 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 let's let's have questions but let's talk about where you can go from here so we've been going an hour um, and uh, we've got uh, 152 people on the line Jason I'm, I know you are yes. pleased about that um, and I think everybody's had really good attention I think it's uh, people are staying for for this um, and we have a bit more time so let's take a five minute break for uh, a message from our sponsor who is Jason Josselson here um, Jason tell us yeah. if for those of you who um, say you know this is pretty darn cool um, I want to be able to do that how can they get some help doing it uh, brilliant thanks uh, Eric yeah um, so basically this particular week I'm opening up a free complimentary transformation call of 45 minutes privately with me it's free I only have 10 slots available so what I would suggest to you it's absolutely free there's no cost to it and all you need to do I, I hope Eric can paste this in the chat this link conceptdesignarchitect.com forward slash book me and you will be taken to a questionnaire and that questionnaire will ask you a whole bunch of questions and then it will basically take you to my Calendly scheduler and you can book a time with me and what I would suggest is that um, to grab your spot immediately because the slots get filled up extremely quickly and then I'll meet with you and we can take a look at your design process. We can take a look at your presentation process and we can see how we can improve together and give you wings to fly and, and, and help you create a streamlined workflow. But really, it's all about you. It's not about me. And um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to partake in, in sharing things with you. Um, what I wanted to say as well, Eric, is that we... If you do book a call with me, you'll get access to my PDF, which is this particular PDF. So um, let me just open it for you and show you what it looks like. Yeah, so this, I've, I've looked at this, folks. Um, it's filled with a lot of great information. And uh, I think in and of itself, it's um, you know a, a good learning tool. So, um, you know, and you can see from the way that uh, uh, Jake structured this presentation, uh, you know, what a master he is at communicating um, and sharing visually st stunning um, imagery, um, as well as clearly, um, you know, pointing out uh, sort of the workflow and the opportunities 
um, here. So this this PDF is well worth going through. It's like how many pages is it? It's a whole lot of pages, probably about 27 pages. But what the beauty about this uh, actual PDF, it's got links to what's inside my uh, program, um, what you need to do before you meet with me on a call. It's also got a link to my masterclass, which is uh, another version, another masterclass. So if you want to rewatch it, uh, you can see it there. Uh, it's more uh, edited as a video, and then you can see some student work you can see some imagery from our students which you can zoom into and take a look uh, you'll see wayne's work staff's work all, all everyone that is busy right now and then obviously we have at least 20 um, uh, architects that have been through the process and you can watch what they are saying about this process and you'll find that in the pdf at the end and obviously we have q a so very very um, jam-packed, full of information. You just simply fill in the the questionnaire, and you will at this URL, and you'll be taken to the download page. Uh, after you book a time, you'll be able to get this PDF. So after you've actually scheduled your time with me, you'll be able to download the PDF with all the information to take a look at a more detailed view on how it can help you. Okay, so um, that, I think that's really clear. Just uh, you feel free to start that process now while you're on the call or to do it right afterward. Uh, there's a bunch of questions, so let's go into yes, the questions. Let's go for it. Yeah, um, so uh, Jeff Tanzel says, I do both architecture and landscape uh, architecture. How well does SketchUp interface with land F slash X? So land F slash X must be a tool, a software tool. What I can say to you is I have no clue, <laughs> but if it's a DWG file, no problem. You can smooth uh, stuff out in SketchUp. It's really um, a very powerful program where it can take geometry and soften it. And if you've got rigid line work or 3D models, it will soften them. Um, we do have three landscape architects busy using this process at the moment. So I'm not sure. I've never heard of Land X before. I'll take a look and, and get back to you on that. So, yeah. So if someone wants to um, actually just get in touch with you, uh, they, would they write to something at conceptdesignarchitect.com? What would it be? Yeah, if they need my email address, they can contact me at jason at concept design. Sorry, jason at the the word the concept design architect.com mm -hmm. and you'll be able to contact me there or mm -hmm. just simply book a time with me and we can have a conversation which would also really be easier for you um, so you could go to my website the concept design the this particular url and find my email address there there is definitely a support button there okay great um, so uh, next question how do you make accurate reflections Great question. It's and simple. I want to bring up an image um, uh, rather than just leave this one slide up for now. Yeah, yeah, it... yes. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's just. Um, how do you make a reflection? So basically, it's a Photoshop process. What you would do is you would copy your image and invert it, and then you would you would a reflection is simply a mirror image of your particular. Um, building or you, you know it's uh, let me see if I can find a reflection here I've definitely got one somewhere here <laughs> um, but you can definitely do reflections we do a lot of that type of uh, photo editing but I'll have to take a look for it I haven't prepared the uh, images with reflections in them yet but you just invert the image and it's something that you do in post-production really quickly and you can get marvelous reflections happening Okay, so I, I imagine that it's really this sort of thing that um, is uh, used selectively, and uh, because really, uh, when we're talking about the dreamscape, when we're talking about the imagination, um, you know, that's sort of a, a subtle thing that I'd say would be less important than in a photorealistic one where you go, this looks nice, but it doesn't look real. Well, this doesn't look real; it looks wonderful. So. Um, so anyway, that's just my take on it. All right. Um, 
Stephen says, uh, so you can downgrade the imported models to keep size down. So the imported models, um, I guess, we're talking about two different things, imported from Archicad or Revit, and we're talking about imported entourage. So, uh, you know, one of the things um, yeah. SketchUp can deal with yeah. the polygon count quite beautifully. Um, so it's yeah. not as much of an issue as it might be in yeah. some other ways. What I would suggest is bring your raw model in from Archicad without any entourage, because it takes 10 minutes to put entourage back into your design or maybe longer if you enjoy placing stuff and can become a, a, something that's therapeutic, you know. But what I'm trying to say to you is I prefer to bring my raw models in without any entourage from mm -hmm. Archicad and from Revit. Um, Archicad, you can save as a SketchUp file and it will bring it in, but make sure you switch your entourage off because you don't know if it's going to triangulate stuff and it's, it just becomes a bit of a hassle to bring entourage in from Archicad and in five minutes you can use the SketchUp uh, entourage and replace it. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps. Yeah, um, so I'm just uh, doing a, uh, to so that everybody can see the questions, I'm just uh, replying just with a period and it shows up in people's uh, uh, chat here. Um, so Jeff Tandel says the bar looks inviting. Okay, that's great. That was, I guess, the the Sunshine Island bar. Now Ryan Gear. Now Ryan, I, I don't know well, but we we had contact many times over uh, the years. He was managing 3D Warehouse back in 2014. So um, <laughs> so he was involved with with that. There were two and a half million objects in the warehouse, and we were anticipating adding at least a million a year. Also, notice that the manufacturers at the bottom of the homepage, their content is to scale. So 3D Warehouse is um, an amazing resource. And while you can bring it in directly into Archicad, and I'm sure into Revit, it's designed for SketchUp. And uh, so it just works, you know, so simply. So uh, Henry says, yeah. uh, how do you do lines? He's asking me, Eric, how do you do lines? I'm not quite sure what your question is, but we did, I, I, there was a question earlier. Can you do your own sketchy line type uh -huh. in SketchUp? Yeah, so SketchUp has a lot of presets of, of lines that are already created. Let's just jump into that quickly for you. You can take a look. There's a whole lot of presets that are set up here in the SketchUp menu. So if you, you go into a close-up shot here, just quickly, I'll show you quickly how to do that. Then you can, this is an airbrush with endpoints. So you just click on it, right? and then it will create those lines. Obviously, you've, you've got to refine them by adjusting the thickness, but there's a whole bunch of preset lines. And then SketchUp does have a line maker, but you don't need to get into that type of detail because there are hundreds of different pens that are already set up here with line work. So you can experiment with those um, and really you can, play with the settings in in the edge settings line work in sketchup is called edge edges so these are the edge settings you can put profiles on you can extend the line work here you could for instance say i want 55 take a look at this it goes crazy you know you could extend your line work up and down in different directions you can decrease that so you can get really amazing line work out of sketchup so and you can also absolutely change the color you know any color that you wish and um, you can get some wild stuff happening hope that helps okay yeah i i, I seem i was answering some questions there but it certainly out of the corner of my eye looked really good so there's um uh jeff asks i missed where to get the pdf so that was a pdf that had all the wonderful information um if you book a call or when you book a call for with jason to talk to him they'll send you that PDF. So that's sort of yeah. a little extra bribe. Yeah. Regardless of what you do, whether you actually end up working with Jason, um, you'll get that PDF and I think you'll find that a great resource. Um, yes. All right, I, so. can give you, I can give you the, the link to the PDF, but it, if you do fill in the, the booking form, you'll absolutely be able to get it at the end of that. So I just don't want to comp over complicate things. Mm -hmm. Just follow the process and you'll get the, the PDF. Right. Okay. Um, so you Jeff, are, are, uh, yes. no, I, I think let's let's leave it as is that if, if someone wants to get the PDF and not book a call, you can email me um, or email J Jason and uh, we can do that. 
Um, so uh, uh, Jeff also says Land FX, which is the tool he talked about for landscaping, uh, is based on it rides on top of AutoCAD, but has many features uh, geared to landscape architects. Okay, so if it's an AutoCAD file or an AutoCAD add-on, then it's native underneath um, modeling tool is uh, or modeling format is DWG, and uh, you can import the DWG directly into SketchUp. Um, yes, as long as you, you, you've you got access to exporting as DWG, um, an earlier version, AutoCAD 2013, you'll have absolutely no problems with any model, you know, right. um, and you can you can experiment because SketchUp can import most file uh, extensions. Right, okay. So Jeff also says, can you work on Mac, older computers and newer chip? The new chip has issues with AutoCAD based programs, wondering about SketchUp, any hardware recommendations? So let's just break this down. So, you know, in the world out there, there's Mac and PC would be our primary things. I mean, occasionally we talk to people who have Linux or something like that, uh, but yes. you know, Mac and PC, you know, Mac has gone through various developments as, as has the PC, but particularly Mac now has, Apple now has a new chip chips that they're put, being put into their computers that are no longer Intel based or directly compatible, but they generally will run software that run, you know, that has, say has run on the Mac and even on PCs um, reasonably well. Uh, now I know that there's some, there's always going to be some uh, learning curve or some, some things that, that uh, break as new, new things go on. But in general, you should be able to to work around uh, those issues for the most part. Um, but uh, uh, you know, if you're working with AutoCAD-based programs, I'm a little bit surprised to to hear you ask about Mac chips um, because mostly, if you're if you're working with AutoCAD, you're working with PC. But um, I think that's as far as we can go right now. Um, Ryan Gear, again, the person with uh, 3D Warehouse um, intimate experience in terms of working as part of the team, using Style Builder that comes with SketchUp allows you to make a new kind of line. So Style Builder, um, I think you yes. referenced um, that, so you can do that. Um, yes. I still think SketchUp uh, needs to improve its Style Builder. Uh, with regards to visually representing it on the screen properly. Mm -hmm. So you find that SketchUp visually, once you export it, it's set on the image, on the JPEG. But on the screen, sometimes it can be, you know, you need to play around with it. But uh, um, when you export, you normally get the most amazing line work. And there is a multiplier which allows you to thicken the line work. So you okay. can play with that in SketchUp. I hope uh, that helps. So um, Matt McDonald asks, any experience with Autodesk Form or Form It versus SketchUp? Yeah. It seems the workflow between Revit and Form It may eventually push the industry that direction. So Form It, I guess, is something like their version of SketchUp. Yes, yes, I play with Form It. Um, look, they, it's like a complete knockoff of of SketchUp. I don't think their entourage system is is anywhere. I, I, they've got to catch up a, a huge amount to get to where SketchUp is. And the beauty about SketchUp is that it's just so primitive, but so powerful and primitive in a good way. You know, there's not a lot of commands. There's not a lot of um, issues, you know, commands and and settings and you just draw. It's like you have that absolute mind to hand control like you would have with a pen where where you you just want to stay away from you know getting involved in too too many commands and iterations of typing on your keyboard stuff you know using the mouse and your mind is where you want to be as a designer that's how we work right. and um I, I don't know how that relates back to form a 360 300 what what is it called again sorry form it Form dash well, format. Sorry, yes, yes. I've used format. I just didn't have the same experience. Um, not, I, I, you know, I was hoping to get a great experience out of it, but not yet. I'm sure they may get there, but uh, if they're on the right path, if they're trying to copy SketchUp. Well, so let, let's just talk for a minute about workflow and 
strategies and principles. Now, let's just assume that at some point Formit becomes just an amazing tool, just as good as SketchUp, maybe with some other benefits and stuff like that. One of the things that you pioneered here, Jason, is to say, you know what? When you have a tool that can work in a sketch mode with all of these controls about visual effects that are um, that are related to sketching and drawing as opposed to rendering and making photos, right? When you have yes. a tool like that, then you can create something beautiful that touches people. It's in the imagination. So you develop the whole approach for picking out entourage, for um, developing the line styles, for um, experimenting with things, and then composing it in Photoshop with the multiple layers that can combine even different the sun from different angles i know that was one of the things you that surprised yes. me back in an earlier presentation is that sometimes you have to cheat not in a bad yes. way not to say you know make mislead people but to get more dr drama to get you know just like in a tv show they have lighting that you know you're not actually paying attention to but it it affects the yes. scene right it's not real you know yes. interior lighting it's tv lighting right yes. so Jason, when you've developed this whole workflow, it's an approach, it's a method, it's a, a workflow that um, can be adapted to different tools. So if Formit yes. eventually becomes as facile a tool to work with as SketchUp, yes. the principles yes. will still be there. Um, exactly, so it's exactly. It's it's exactly what you're saying. You know, it's it's an instrument. You know, it's like if you want to compare it, I heard a mentor of mine saying the other night, you know, if you look at it through the the the, the, the lens of music, you know, you have a song. Let's say the song was by, I don't know, the Beatles or, I don't know, Led Zeppelin or whoever you prefer, a famous song. And then there are different iterations of that song where they'll have it unplugged and they'll have it... But the, the 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 philosophy, the concept of the process is it's got nothing to do with computers. It's got to do with what Sir Norman Foster said here. It's just a tool. And that's exactly it. That's that's embodying the, this philosophy that the pens on the computer are left to their own devices. They're equally dumb and only as good as the person driving them. So this is a technique. It's not the software just by itself. So exactly what you just said now, Eric. Mm -hmm. Exactly, okay. you're on, on, on the target. Okay, so there's some other comments and clarifications. AutoCAD works on the Mac OS. Okay, that's fine. And um, and issues with Ryan saying SketchUp has not really worked on their style builder interface since it's released way back when. Okay, so those are limitations. Yes. Um, yes. It's, it's I, I don't see them as limitations because I feel that it's just super powerful. I mean, take a look at the line work here. You don't need more than what they offer. I mean, I'd, I would not know why you would need more, but um, you can accomplish everything right now with what they offer. Okay. So yeah. um, here's an interesting question about, um, let's say, the approach. Do you yes. purposely avoid making a sky background? We were always told in school that the sky helped add depth. This is from Dan Wyckoff. <laughs> Well, it's a great question because when you take a look at taking the blue out of the sky, now let's compare this to a watercolor, you know, if you were going to paint a watercolor. So what happens, what happens particularly, you can put a sky in, in, in here, but the whole trick when you come to doing layout is to have the different images fusing with one another in your layout so that you you get this amazing narrative so there's some sort of poetry when you're putting three or four images on a page and when you don't have the sky you can blend them into one another as you can see straight in front of me right now you know on this this image is that you you have this fusion if you put a sky in then you you've got to uh, airbrush it out or do whatever you have to do to get these images to to play with one another. So it becomes more complex when you have sky in, but you can. I'm sure there are, I'm sure this image has a sky in here. This image had a sky, I, I don't know. So I, I, I do suggest to my students to stay away from blue skies. I don't like them myself. And um, you don't need to create skies. If the rendering, Jason, you haven't,
with Photoshop. And there is a question, are you going to show us a little Photoshop work? So I don't know if we have time for that. But um, basically, you can take multiple versions of the same perspective to create a layered effect and softening these things and adding in a, you know, a sort of nuance between them. Um, you yes. can put any type of a sky behind it and anything that's opaque will block it out and it'll show up behind it. Now, of course, you want to do the same type of treatment to make it more abstract. You don't want to have a photo of a sky that, you know, stands out against the sketch. Um, but yeah, you, you could do that. But when you do want to do this photo yeah. composition of multiple images, um, which, uh, you know, Jason's yeah. showing, uh, then obviously it causes some, some challenges. Um, so yeah, yeah the, uh, there is an image here with the sky, and I'll show you. Eric, can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm breaking up a little bit here. Here, you can take a look at this 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 image. It's got a sky, and you know, so you can you can put a sky. In. There are no rules, right? You know, mm -hmm. you you're not you're not you can do whatever you choose. But for 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 me, like it's the sky is is somewhat. Uh, um, seductive it's it's quite a nice looking sky and he hasn't used sky on the lower image but this is the same building this is actually an archicad model and um been brought into sketchup and rendered this is one of the projects in the training so um yeah, yeah. so absolutely you can use this guy <laughs> so there's a question uh, from kevin cabral would a similar system work with corel painter so uh, for, as far as I know, Corel Painter would be a Photoshop knockoff, you one might say, that it, it basically yes. is yes. Um, a, yes. a photo, yes. well, it's an image manipulation tool. And as yes. long as you have multiple layers and you have controls of those yes. layers, you can probably get yes. most of the same effects that yes. Jason uses at the back end of this process. This is what I would suggest. There are a lot of knockoffs of Photoshop out there. I would say, like, if you take a look at buying Photoshop, it's eleven dollars a month, which is, I mean, it used to cost a, a fortune, and now it's they've reduced the cost. If you're buying Adobe Lightroom, uh, you get it with Lightroom, and it's really the most amazing software. Um, there are knockoffs of Photoshop that are free. You can try GIMP.com. I would suggest stay away. They don't have the same. It's the difference between a Rolls Royce and a entry level car. You know, it's just you want to use software. You're an architect or you're a designer or a building designer, interior designer, you want to use tools that are really good. So I would say if you are going to use cutting edge tools to use Photoshop and if you really on the Mac I would say either Photoshop or Procreate. Right. Yeah, very similar in in, in and, and uh, given that Adobe decided to switch to a subscription model, and it literally is you know ten or fifteen dollars a month, you know. Yes. So hey, it, it, let's yes, let's it's, not, it's a no brainer. Not, not cut pennies um, there, uh, but yes, you can probably do most of the stuff that Jason does in the back part of composition and uh, layering in other tools. But that's fine. It's it's the approach that matters. Um, yes. and, and essentially yes. knowing where you want to go to. So where do you want to go to? You want to a have an image that has uh, a nuance and subtlety and not over much detail. You want to have something that's a workflow that's quick and easy so that you don't even think twice about creating two or three or ten images, um, you know, because they go quickly. It's not uh, a matter of, um, you know, slaving over it. You don't want to have to put in a lot of extra detail in your model to begin with. You know, the, the whole thing, if you show a raw model, it's in design development to a client and you try to make it photorealistic, it doesn't look like much yet because you haven't put in the lighting, you haven't put in the textures and whatever. So you do photorealistic stuff, it looks like crap, right? Um, yes. But you do a suggestive image like this. I mean, yes. the shapes and forms here, if if I were to look at that as an Archicad expert, I'd say I could probably model that basic building shape and design in an hour, you know, or you know, something pretty quickly. No, I, I didn't come up with the design, but I'm saying the modeling doesn't have to be very detailed. And then, you know, as you said, in 20 minutes yes. you 
and add some entourage, the people, etc. Um, yes. So. Yes. No, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm just looking for an image that I could show you how to do a a reflection. Let's let's pretend this 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 image is a. I'm going to do a very crude reflection uh, for you. Uh, let's say the the road is wet and there's some sort of reflection in there. I'm just going to do a snippet of this right now, um, just for those guys that want to see. Um, let me just create it off the clipboard here. I'm going to pull Photoshop in right now. Okay, so here we go. We've got Photoshop. And what I would ultimately do is, what you could do is you could copy this image. And then you paste it on a, on a layer, which is on the right here. Let's just close this. You don't need you don't need to know much in, in Photoshop. There are only a few buttons, about eight or, or nine sort of things that you need to know. And then what I would do is I would absolutely flip this um, uh, image. And the way you do that is you you can just grab the image, right? And we are looking at layer two here, and you've got to uh, transform here, and you look flip vertically. So you invert your image, it's that simple. And then what you can do is you adjust the opacity of your image, and then you can absolutely see that you can get a mirror image of it in the, the bottom of your file here, and you can just, do a little bit of an airbrush erase here. Let's see what this looks like. There you go. And there you go, you've got your reflection and you can bring that opacity down even more. It's that simple, you know. Obviously this bike, you don't, so it looks like there's just been a little bit of a rain here and, um, you know, the, the image looks like, uh, there you go simple hope that helps i i think that was fantastic obviously it's a little different if you were talking about uh, reflections in windows um but uh yeah this a little subtle effect like that definitely can be useful and particularly if you make it really subtle so it's not it's not as even you know a little bit less visible than this maybe um yes. All you right, can, so, uh, you can. The whole idea is to be very suggestive to your clients, you know, mm -hmm. and that's extremely important not to be over dictatorial. And that's the problem with photorealistic render is that your clients start to get an idea of texture and they start speaking about materials. And then your whole design meeting is about materials and not about the design. And so, you know, as a mature designer, you need to know what to show your client in the design conversation. Towards the end of the design process, obviously you can use photorealistic render techniques when you've locked in your design and things are more refined, absolutely 100%. But during your design conversation, which could be anywhere from one or two weeks to uh, six, seven months, you know, then why not use techniques where the, the process is suggestive, you know, use your OCHICAD models and your Revit models and just suggest things, you know, and mm -hmm. that's really, it, I just want to say this one thing, it's super important to understand that your client wants to be part of the process, if it's a developer, if it's a private client, and the way to do that is to be absolutely suggestive, you know, when you start dictating to people, they stop listening to you. And that's really how it works. You know, you don't want to dictate. You 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 want to be empathetic towards your your clients. And the only way to do that is to be suggestive in your visual imagery. Visual imagery is a communication tool, and a lot of architects need to learn uh, how to do that. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's about relationship. It's a psychological tool. So speaking of su being suggestive, bring back up your slide with the call to action to, to book a call. So let's just suggest okay. that if you want to go deeper than what you saw here, if this inspired you visually and your imagination and you're going, wow, this would be really useful when I am working with clients. Uh, and I do see, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put a little context here while you know this is up on screen. Yes. Um, 
there are many ways that you can win over a client. There are all sorts of aspects of the conversation where you're asking questions and finding what motivates them and what's important to them and what they're afraid of and, and uh, you know, what they dream of and their, their image board of, you know, what, what sort of things they really like. There's all sorts of stuff that can help you connect and where people go, you really understand me or, you know, wow, I'm excited about this process because your, you know, your ideas seem really in line with what I need. Well, this yes. is one of those tools. This is one of those tools where you say, all right, well, I got a concept here, um, you know, or here's two or three concepts. Um, and let me just show you what it is. You haven't come up with the end result. It isn't photorealistic it isn't defined it's more imaginative it's more uh personal and it can make them go oh wow i love this i love you for bringing this into you know the, the imagination yes. so it can really yes. i think spark uh, a bond between you and and the potential client um where they go yeah i i love where this is going and that's what yes. you want i love where this is going yes so there, there, ben there are benefits to both sides. To the client, the benefit is that you're including him in the conversation. Um, you're not dictating to the client. And for the architect, he's winning because he's not uh, working through the night and he's not preparing using backbreaking technology to get these images out. Um, so you kind of feel safe during your day. You don't feel like overwhelmed. You know, that feeling on my back, you know, gosh, I used to feel it on my shoulders, this this weight weighing down on me. My God, my meeting's tomorrow. How the hell am I gonna get this stuff complete? And what happened is I would say for 12 years after I started doing this, I never ever had that energy on my shoulders again. While I watched everyone in the studio, and I've worked in studios with 60 to 150 people, and I see people sweating, literally sweating, while I'd be going, you know, for coffee or for lunch or whatever, going outside in those days for a cigarette or whatever, without that panic, you know what I mean? So it's just, that's what it's about, you know, architecture is not an easy game, you know, and, uh, you, you've got to make your life easier. You've got to look after your health. You've got to look after your mental health and also the people within your office. You know, you've got to take care of them. And the only way to do it is by coming up with streamlined ways of working. If if you are not working in this process, you know, at least take a look at SketchUp. I'm not an affiliate of SketchUp. I have nothing to do with selling SketchUp. I'm just saying it's an amazing tool for a designer to be using complementing ArchiCAD, complementing Revit, and give it a bash. You know, you can possibly get a 31-day trial version, um, depending on the month, you know. So mm -hmm. go for it, you know, um, experiment with it. Great, a lot of great comments here, um, you know, that, uh, you know, so uh, I'm going to feed a couple other questions um, before we finish yeah. up. Um, so is it possible to import a file with a sun study into SketchUp and Photoshop? Um, so uh, with a sun study. So sun studies, yes. if, we, if we think about it, you can do it in your CAD program, ArchiCAD, and I'm sure Revit yes. can generate, hey, here's a, here's a sun, you know, sun is coming from this angle, et cetera. Um, yes. You know, we have yes. that in, in, uh, in inside SketchUp, so you can do that. Yes. Um, Great when question, you, great question. Mm -hmm. Simple. SketchUp has got a geolocating tool. Mm -hmm. You just go add more imagery here. Mm -hmm. It's got the whole surface of the earth, basically from Bing. There are two different resources it uses. Um, um, you go select region. You can see, you can zoom out here. You can go to obsolete places in Africa and you don't need a land surveyor. And like, you know, we, we've done a lot of projects in deepest, darkest Africa and Zambia in um, places where you, were, you, you wouldn't be able to. You were based in South Africa for a while, right? Yeah. Well, I'm a, I am a South African, but I, at the moment I've, uh, I live in Jerusalem where we have electricity. And um, so at least I can use my computer. And But if, if I wanted to go to Maseru here, which is in uh, the, the mountains, 
and this particular lake and I wanted to go and import this piece of land, I could just go and snip it and go and import it. Obviously use Digital Globe. Um, I'm just seeing what does it say, the maximum amount of tiles, it's too big. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Let's just go, it was a really vast and and then import it and then it comes in with contours and uh, and it also comes in with the sun setting so you can just switch your shadows on um yeah um let's just see here what's so, happened so the short answer is yes you can do sun studies uh using this approach um and in fact probably have some more benefits than doing it in the other cad programs like archicad and revit um, yes 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 so Paolo says, I'm viewing this webinar from Italy where it is night at the moment. It will be possible to see again the webinar at a more convenient time. Yeah, several people have asked. Absolutely, it's being recorded. And so we will make available the link to view the recording to all registrants. So all of you have been yes. on the call if you want to watch it again and say, oh, let me, I want to watch that part yes. where, you know, so you'll be able to, to see it. Um, okay, so uh, I think... Um, Oh, one, one last question I, I see here. Ryan says, are you developing yes. a course for SketchUp on the iPad using the Adobe Photoshop or Fresco on iPad? I think you can use line styles in SketchUp on the iPad. So do you personally do everything on the computer? Do you do use iPad or uh, Android tablets much? Any it's a comment? great question. It's a great question. So if you can get this foundation in place, there's absolutely the next level, which is Procreate, which is... Uh, any of the softwares you can use Photoshop the same way you can use Procreate. You can, I would suggest the iPad. You know the latest uh, iPad with pen. It's unbelievable, and you could you could do touch-ups over it. But you don't really need to do that. But if you really wanted to, you could come up with iterations using uh, hand-drawn over this image. But you, when you take a look at an image like this, you don't. If, if you're an artist and you want to continue embellishing it, maybe you want some white outlines, you know, I don't know, uh, you're using a white pen or, you know, you could, you could absolutely put a bit of Copic marker in it, but that's really up to you, you know, so there is no limitations to this method. You would get a foundation in place and then thereafter experiment with those tools. Right. Okay, so put up that call to action at the end uh, for booking a call. Um, yes. Jason, fantastic. I love how you've taken um, the whole workflow and the presentation about the workflow to the next level. You clearly, in terms of the students that you're working with, um, have gotten more and more people to create a, more and more amazing work. Um, I think that's a testament to the type of people who are attracted as well as to your skill as a teacher and a mentor. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, I think the combinations of what you showed earlier with the Frank Lloyd Wright and the Richard Meyer and all of those things just really stimulated my mind. Uh, you know, yes. I'm, I'm sure everyone who was here, uh, you know, felt an appreciation for the masters yes. and, and also the context of saying, oh, my God. This stuff actually, I wouldn't say it stands up next to, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright, but it's it's got a lot of the stuff that we love about those, uh, you know, those hand renderings. And yes. it's so easy, you know, if you've got a 3D model in Arcad or Revit or something like that, it becomes easy with this whole approach to get something yes. that's really lovely, really lovely. Yes. I, I think what designers need to un understand what you, you're speaking about uh, is besides it being lovely, it's simpler. It's simplicity. It's less is more. And I think we need to simplify our lives. You know, it's so important to to make things more manageable and to know how to do that. It's taken me 15 years to work out how to do this properly and and I'm so excited about it and just want to help other architects and um, you know it's very rewarding to see it working in in the industry you know with my students and um, I just think that we we need to look after our health especially mental health I know that I've experienced terrible amounts of stress in the work environment and 
Um, I just didn't want to have that lifestyle. That's just something that you don't want to do. And if you're a young architect or a veteran architect, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're a young architect, you may have no clue. You know, you're excited about working through the night. And I'm saying to you, it's not a good idea. And um, to find ways of be becoming um, a master at working in stealth mode. And that's what's going to make you money as well and it's going to help you move forward in your career quicker. And it also, this type of imagery, um, because it differentiates, your, if, if you can create up this type of, sorry, style, you know, it's not like other people are doing. And it's, it's the furthest thing from the truth that animations and virtual fly-throughs, like we spoke about earlier, are, are key to winning projects. A client needs a static image to say yes. He doesn't need a fly bar to say yes. And um, although, you know, that's what's happening in the industry, it's not the truth. So I just wanted to say that, you know, if you're doing an urban design, I've done many urban designs, big urban designs, you don't have to have 50 animations and you need three or four big images on A1 page and that's it and your client signs on the dotted line, you know, we want to move forward, we want to manifest the fees for you in this project, we want to pay your bills so that you can pay your staff, and it's all about moving forward quickly and igniting uh, uh, the energy within a project with a client. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Jason. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we actually have uh, 99 people still on the call, so it was 152 at the highest number that I saw. So uh, that means that, you know, majority, two thirds of you um, have been on for well, the full session. So Thank fantastic. You. Um, it's great to have you here. Yeah, fantastic. So Watch. if you have any questions related to Archicad and this process, I'm your guy. Um, Jason is uh, absolutely there to help you, whether you use Archicad, Revit, or something else to uh, implement this type of process. Book a call. Um, he'll discuss what you're doing, the pieces that you'll uh, you know, want to consider adding on in terms of the workflow. And if you do decide that you want to actually become a master of the Artful Render process, then Jason will tell yes. you the next steps. Yes, and Eric, what you could also do is offer my um, in the chat my email address. If anyone wants to chat to me, then mm -hmm. they can simply uh, let me just write it out for you. Yeah, I already put I'm it into I already put it into the the chat. Um, okay. Uh, so it's um, Jason at theconceptdesignarchitect.com, yes. um, yes. and uh, well, you can see the the link for the the booking um, calendar page. So if you're watching yes. this recording later, um, Jason does make more slots available from time to time. So right now he's got a limited number, um, but uh, uh, definitely, you know, if you're seeing, watching this recording later and you go, wow, this is really cool, do uh, book a call with yes. Jason. Um, you know, he, he uh, has 10 now, but more will come later, so. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Just grab grab it uh, while you can, and I look forward to chatting with you and and seeing what you you producing in your own work. You know, it's really interesting for me to meet with you and to see the the level of imagery that you're producing, and then we can chat about uh, you know different ways to streamline your process and super excited about that and super excited about meeting you and looking forward to doing that and i really thank eric for providing this platform and thank you you've been absolutely amazing to me e eric's been a mentor to me not only is he an unbelievable teacher of archicad he, he is an amazing marketing master maestro and uh, over the years we've 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 collaborated on so many things, so thank you very much for that, Eric. You're welcome. All right, I'm just, uh, so um, again, okay. final closing words. Thank you, Jason. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and uh, book a call with Jason if you'd like to take the next step, at least to dis discuss how you could learn and master 
this approach to uh, visual communication, to handcrafted images using, you know, these very amazing tools. All right. Take care, all. We'll uh, Thank see, you, everyone. see you again. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Eric.